So while using GPT or BARD to create a data dictionary is really helpful, we can actually use GPT to document our code in other ways, like properly formatting our M code, adding in comments, using it to adjust our applied step names, and much more. So from Power BI here, what I want to do is basically use our product lookup table M code, right? So from our product lookup table, if we head into our advanced editor here, we can see that we have all of our underlying M code. And basically what I want to do is ask ChatGPT if they can format and update this code in the manner that we want. So let's do that. Let's head over to ChatGPT. And I just want to ask ChatGPT if they can do what I'm asking. So I'm going to paste my prompt and I'm saying, hey, I have some Power Query M code. Can you add comments, format the code and update my applied step names so that they're easier to understand? It says, of course, I'd be happy to help you with your Power Query M code. Please provide the code that you would like me to format and update and I'll do my best to assist you. So we'll hop back over to Power BI and we'll copy our M code. All right, so we'll select everything here and pay attention to the structure here. We've got individual lines for all of these different applied steps. This actually isn't the proper way to format your M code. There's other tools that you can use to format the code. So let's see if ChatGPT can do this along with helping to update the applied step names and some of the comments. All right, so we'll copy the code and paste it in ChatGPT and then we'll run this. All right, so it says certainly, I've added comments, formatted the code, and updated the applied step names. And now we're seeing the output of the code, right? So we've got our first let parameter. We have step one, loading the CSV. Step two, promoting the headers. Step three, changing the column types. And these double slashes, these indicate that these are all comments. And you can also see that ChatGPT is formatting this code differently than we saw in the UI. So instead of having this change type step be a single line, we see that we have the change type step with the function that's being called. And then we have our curly brackets with all of the different column headers and their data types. So again, ChatGPT looks like it's updating this appropriately. Now it's finished. What we can do is copy this code, head back over to the query editor. And if we paste it in, look what happens. We have all of that same code that's now broken out into its individual steps. Each step is commented in green here. So we have step one, load the CSV file, and then we have all of the parameters associated with that first step. Step two, we're promoting headers, and then we have our promoted header step. Step three, change column types. Again, we've got that same step name, the function that's being called, and then we have all of the different columns within the table and the data type that's being assigned to it. So as we work down all of these applied steps here, so ChatGPT has actually done a really great job at adding comments to the code, formatting it appropriately, and we'll see how it did with the updating the applied step names to something a little bit more readable. So we'll click done, and there you go. What's interesting is a couple of things that I noticed. One, I don't see any updates to the actual applied step names, right? It's still source, promote headers, change type, change to currency, remove columns. But what has happened is that to the right here, we now have a comment. So we can see step one, we're loading the CSV file, which again, this is a lot more descriptive than just having the source step. And we don't have to click into the advanced editor to see that comment we can actually see it right here in line with the applied step. So we have load the CSV, we're promoting headers, we're changing column types. We change the selected columns to currency. Again, if we wanted to make this comment more descriptive or more detailed, you could always come into the advanced editor and you could update this comment. So instead of change selected columns to currency type, you could say change cost and price columns to currency type. We'll click done. And now when you hover over this comment, you can see that updated. So again, the point here is that it's super easy to use GPT to help format and comment your code. 
And then once you have that baseline, that structure in place, you can then just easily update it to whatever you want. And the same thing kind of goes for the applied step names. You could get a lot more descriptive in your prompt with ChatGPT and help it understand exactly how you want some of these applied steps to be named. But again, it's also pretty easy to go through after the fact here and just quickly update them. So that's a pretty fun thing that you can kind of play around with to see if you could get GPT to update those applied step names exactly the way you wanted it to. All right, so with that, I think that'll wrap up this quick demo on commenting and formatting your M code with ChatGPT. Hey there, if you like this video and you wanna learn more, check out our brand new free course, ChatGPT for Data Analytics. You can find it at mavenanalytics.io. We'll walk you through our best practices and some of the most interesting use cases for tools like Excel, Google Sheets, Power BI, SQL, and Python. It's a fun little course, and it's a great way to get up to speed in these new AI tools. I hope you'll check it out and let us know what you think.